All right, Joshua, some things never change even though there's a difference from year one to year two. Every time I wait for you, you are out here working, putting in so much extra work. Where does that work ethic come from? I would say I'm addicted to wanting to be great. I don't know, I think it developed into college okay. when I finally realized that I could actually go to the league. Mm -hmm. And then I was putting in extra work every day after practice. I almost like, that's what I looked forward to going to practice was mm -hmm. to do extra after practice. And you know, the older I got, and I started to realize like there's different things I need to work on. So I would just always get better at something after practice. Biggest difference from year one to year two for you? Uh, I would say that I am, I know the offense. I would say now I'm working on the fine details of the offense, mm -hmm. knowing where exactly I have to be. Like I know where to be, but now there's like another step where it's like you need to know where to be and in different coverages and you know running the route differently mm -hmm. and sitting in this situation, running in this situation, reading it off this guy. So now it's just the fine, the fine nuances of the offense. A lot of guys come into the NFL and this is their first job. But for you, you've sort of treated football like a job from when you were 15, making the decision to come to America, go to St. Thomas Aquinas. How did that mindset sort of help you as you've started your NFL career? It's helped a lot, and especially in college when I already felt like I was two years ahead of everybody else because I left when I was 15. So I had two years in high school when I transferred to live with my aunt and uncle to a different country. Yeah, you could you could say you right? could below, but yeah, still. you could say. Um, but yeah, I mean, from there that was like an early start to it, and then probably my third year of college is when I was like okay, I can make it. And then my senior year of college, I was like, okay, this is, I'm gonna pretend like I'm a rookie in the NFL, my senior year of college. So when I got here, I wasn't really surprised. Like everything was what I expected it was um, when I got here. Mm -hmm. He rushed four, Herbert stands tall, throws outside, has a man, Palmer, touchdown! 12 yards, Herbert to Josh Palmer. Second touchdown of the rookies inaugural season and the Chargers back up 13 to seven. Week 14 last year, the Giants game, Joe Lombardi said he really felt like that game was a huge boost for you. Obviously, Keenan didn't play, you step in. What did you see from that game for yourself? I felt that it was a great learning experience. It was a little taste of uh, what it's like starting out there. I prepared a lot. I mean, I always prepare as if I'm gonna start. I can tell. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even if I, even when I, I wasn't started at some point in the seasons, but, uh, I was working a lot with Keenan, mm -hmm. uh, working on being in the slot, working on being outside, working on all his routes that he runs and how to run them and where to be. Um, so that was a good confidence booster. I would say that wasn't even a game though where I felt like, okay, everything is, is slowing down, like being uncomfortable. It was, was, it was the game? Houston game. Okay. Even though we lost, mm -hmm. that was more of a game where like going into the game, I was like, okay, I feel like everything is slowing down a little bit. Like I can see the bullets coming. Every time I go, every time I'm on the line, I'm like, damn, what hasn't he seen yet? Now that you got him thinking, just start doing everything on leverage now. So once you get your leverage, keep your leverage. You know what I'm saying? Talk about Keenan. You've been very candid about getting cut-ups of him, going back to his rookie season, watching some tape of him, asking him about it. What have those maybe sessions with Keenan been like? They were fun. A lot of <laughs> a lot of laughter, a lot of jokes, yeah. especially watching his routes and route up people. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I'd watch him, bring it to him, and ask him what he was thinking on this. Uh, why'd he do this? Mm -hmm. What could he have done better? What could he have done instead? You know, just trying to get different things. Sometimes I fill my head up too much with things to where <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking all over the place, so I have to narrow that down. Does he tell you, hang on, hang on, let's bring it in a little bit? Or? Uh, yeah, sometimes. Sometimes, like, even on the other day, I was talking to him, and I was like, I feel like every time I'm lining up, I'm trying to think about something that the guy didn't see, but at the same time, it's like, he has to react to something, so it's almost like don't think too much. You know, I always, I'm working on releases and I always say to myself, like I have like 16 releases I can do, but I don't need 16 releases. I only need like four or five maybe, so that's what I'm just trying to figure out what I, what I like. I just destroyed him. How helpful is it having Keenan out here and just what he's done in this league to watch that? Oh, it's extremely helpful. I don't, um, you know, it's almost like, Maybe a lot of guys wish that when they get when they get drafted into the NFL that like they want to be the guy, they want to be the starter, which of course everybody wants to be, but I'm 
I was so happy when I had a veteran in the room that's you know, a potential Hall of Famer. So I was like, I can learn from him day in and day out, you know, every practice. So that's what I look forward to a lot is watching him, watching him work during practice. Like that's what I, obviously I look forward to making my own plays, but yeah. watching him and learning from him is what another thing that. It's film on the fly. Yeah, yeah. It's a big Star Wars guy. I know you showed me your Darth Vader tattoo last year and it said, be careful not to choke on your aspirations. That's mm -hmm. still the quote that drives you? Yeah, you just don't ask for what you can't handle. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of work with what you have until more is put on your plate. So, you know, I try not to focus on what's on anybody else's plate. I try not to ask for too much, just focus on what's in front of me and just take it one day at a time. It's Joshua. If you want to see more content like this, check out the link right here.